people very often come to me for free advice, usually for two reasons. One, they say that it's simply a yes, no answer, and they just want a simple yes or no to whether they can do something or whether something is right. And the second is that they say that I do so many videos on YouTube about different scenarios, why can't I just tell them what the answer is for their solution because it's just another scenario. So welcome back. If you're new to me, I'm a barrister who helps you understand law on this channel. And that's the real key. I help you to understand the law on this channel. I cannot give you legal advice on this channel because that would require me to sit down and go through all of the detail, research the law if necessary, and see how the law would apply in your specific scenario. So dealing with both of those things and why respectfully many people misunderstand the law, even when I've explained it in one sense or they've seen an example in another and it conflicts with what I've said. But there's an explanation for that as well. And it's all tied up in this same premise of I can't give you free legal advice on this channel. So let's take those in order. First of all, lots of people think that it's simply a yes, no answer. Now, my response to that is it's almost never a yes, no answer. Some things are such as there are strict liability offenses, such as if you are caught in possession of a class A drug, it's strict liability. You are in possession of that drug. And unless you have a legal exemption, such as you're a police officer and therefore you're carrying it as part of your duty because you've confiscated it, clearly police officers need to be exempted from that law, that offence, because they need to handle illicit substances. But those are very few and far between, and customs officers and things like that, but those cases are very few and far between. In almost every other scenario, and I've even contradicted myself saying it's a yes, no, it's still not a yes, no answer, because if you were a police officer and let's say you're off duty, you can see where all the questions come from straight away. Even with a strict liability offence, such as possession of a class A drug, ordinarily it's strict liability. Yes, you are guilty of the offence because you're in possession of it. But even then, there are still questions to be had. Why were you in possession? Were you given it? Were you? Did you find it? Were you taking it to a police station? There's lots of questions that surround the happenstance of you having that in your possession. And therefore, it simply just cannot be a yes, no answer. Also, people say that I give scenarios on my channel. Therefore, why can't I just take theirs as a scenario? The simple reason is if I were to provide that as advice and you relied on it and it turns out to be negligent, you could sue me for negligent advice. And therefore, I need my insurance to be activated. Therefore, I need to be formally instructed, which means you pay for my advice, you pay for my time. But not just that, there's a client care procedure. I give you a very detailed letter detailing all of the terms of the contract between us, assuming that you come to me on a public access basis and not through a solicitor, in which case you instruct the solicitor and the solicitor instructs me. As a public access practitioner dealing with you as I can without the solicitor, I can choose not to take you as a client. So long as I'm not discriminatory in the way that I turn down the instructions, I can just say, I'm sorry, I don't want to take this case. Moreover, if I do this for free, I still have all of the regulatory burden and I still have to treat it as though it's a normal case that I'm being paid for. Now, don't get me wrong, I do my fair share of pro bono work, some of which happens to be for clients with disabilities that have been severely badly treated by one company or another. And the company making a corporate commercial decision is just choosing not to compensate that person, choosing instead to risk the litigation. And I get involved because there is sometimes no other way that they would be able to fight for such a claim, even though they've been so badly treated. But not every case is, to put it bluntly, worthy of pro bono time and pro bono work. I usually point people towards an organization called We Are Advocate, and I'll put the link in the description below. And this organization will assess your case to whether it meets the requirements that they set for pro bono representation and advice. And that is an organization uh, through which I have done pro bono work. So you can see all of that. There is no single yes, no answer. There is no straightforward 
this is just a scenario so give you the answer as soon as i know that you're taking it as legal advice first of all i would either have to say well this is not legal advice but this is the general scenario but even then there is a risk if i know that you're going to rely on it so in the cases that i do choose for my youtube channel I make it clear, all my clerks make it clear, that this is not to be relied upon as legal advice. It's just a generic discussion of the legal scenario and some hypotheticals that might be broadly similar to the case that's presented. So you may see some of those questions that I've done in recent videos. I enjoy doing those. I enjoy talking about those because I do know that it helps to point people in the right direction. It does help people to understand a little bit better how it might apply to those scenarios. But at the same time, I know that you will not rely on it as legal advice because I'm telling you so both all over my channel. And if you send us the scenarios to the clerks or even to me directly, we tell you that you cannot rely on this as legal advice. And finally, coming to the scenario where somebody respectfully will misunderstand something because they've heard of one case which has a particular application and somehow seems to contradict what I've said in a video. Now, make no mistake, I'm not absolutely infallible. At some point, I might get something wrong. And if I do, I will explain it, I will correct it. But otherwise, it's much more likely that that scenario has a very particular application, such as in one case, somebody had previously contacted the company and received some information from them and then acted on the basis of the information they'd received. But that doesn't contradict the normal scenario for the way something that is to be interpreted. But as I say, anything can change one case. So one little detail which isn't given to me might actually change and turn the advice on its head. So unless I'm instructed and I thoroughly investigate the case and ask all the questions that I absolutely need to ask, then you simply cannot rely on it as formal legal advice. That's why I always say you need to seek formal legal advice. But that said, I do hope to demystify the law, to explain these legal scenarios and to give you a better understanding of how it works. So I hope that's been interesting as to why it's never a yes, no answer. If you do like my channel, please do like and subscribe and share it with somebody because after all, my channel only grows with your support by sharing my videos. Please do me the favor now, if any of my videos have helped you in any way whatsoever, find somebody to share it with and ask them to subscribe and I will be eternally grateful. In the meantime, thank you for watching.